time to start doing the wax portion or the artistic portion of the venture, which is what we're going to do today. I'm going to mainly show you on the maxillary um, denture uh, how to do that. Uh, you have one side that's been done in a reasonable fashion by our laboratory technicians. You could probably finesse that a little bit more if you want. The side that you said is probably not quite as pretty as the uh, side that the dental technicians have set, but you can do a little bit to sort of modify both sides when you're doing that. As well as getting the uh, appearance of the gingiva to look uh, natural, you'll also want to smooth out and recontour some of the, uh, the palpal surfaces of the denture. If you've got um, any uh, powder or markings from the articulating paper, it's nice to get those off before you start uh, melting the wax, otherwise you can get uh, either dark black markings in the wax or red markings in the wax. Uh, and that doesn't look so. So we're going to get started with the maxillary denture here. One of the things that you can see as we're looking at the side that the, that the dental technicians have done is that it's sort of scooped out in between the teeth. And if you think about that, and if you look at some dentate cast, um, you'll notice that there's the bulge from the prominence of the alveolar bone that sort of gives that um, convexity uh, to where you would expect the root to be to be growing up into the bone there. And so that's natural to have some of those little blips as you're, as you're looking up uh, on the wax up. So what I'm going to do now is get my um, torch started here. And I'm going to um, just warm it up a little bit. And one of the things I'm going to do is sort of right in between the teeth, I'll take away a little bit of the wax that I have in those areas there. Okay. We will be adding some wax as well, but if we've got too much wax in sort of going into the embrasure areas, um, we, can, we can take some of that away now and it'll be a lot easier. Also, you'll find that if you've got a lot of wax already on your teeth, um, it's helpful to get some of that wax uh, off the teeth before you start doing the overall wax up. Uh, there's a couple of different ways for you to add wax um, to the denture the uh, wax trying that you've done here. One is to just melt the wax, and you can see it here on my number seven spatula. It's molten wax. You don't want to, you want to make sure that it's good and, and soft. Uh, you don't want to trap air bubbles in between or it doesn't look so great. And I can actually build up a little bit of wax um, just above where I expect the root to go there. I can bring that down in between the embrasures, sort of to make a little bit of a and cavity there. And again, you can see that I'm keeping the wax nice and, and melted. Um, some of you are not getting the wax quite hot enough. It's not melting all the way and you get a lot of those uh, white air bubbles. That doesn't look so good and you don't want to see when you bring it to the patient um, for a wax trying. So uh, what I'm going to do is just the anterior teeth here, three incisors first. This is one way to add the wax. I'll show you that on the um, lateral incisor and the central incisor. And then on the canine, I'll show you a slightly different way to add the wax. If you want to try that instead, it's a little bit quicker, uh, but you have to do a little bit more carving. So you can see I've added a little bit of wax in excess of where I want it. I'm trying to get it to look like the roots are going up. I can take my torch and just go over it a little bit to sort of smooth that wax out. Uh, then I can take the other end of my number seven wax batch and what I want to do is start to take away some of the wax. And remember we said that when you're taking the wax ar away around the cervical portion of the tooth, the high point should be a little bit toward the distal of the tooth. If you look at the one over here, you can see the high point of the gingiva. It's a little bit toward the distal. You don't want it right in the middle. It's very unnatural looking to have the absolute center of the cervical portion of the tooth right in the center. So that's one there. And now I'm going to go back over. You, I, you can use either the flat spoon shape or the small pointed shape for the wax. Make sure you go all the way down to the cervical neck of the tooth at least. Um, we're not dealing with pediatric patients, so you normally at least go to CEJ 
for patients who are elderly, if you're doing an RPD, sometimes we'll actually expose a little bit of the root surface of the tooth in order to make it look like the, um, the other teeth that might be adjacent um, to the denture there. Okay, and in between the teeth, again, I'm just going to clear that out. I'm going to sort of blend that in, make it a little bit more concave right in between the embrasures there as well. If you don't expose enough of the tooth, it looks like very short teeth, it looks like the patient uh, is an adult, uh, and it gives an unnatural appearance. So you want to make sure that the transition from the anterior teeth to the posterior teeth is also um, very natural. You don't want to see the canine way up here, which it should be. The neck should, more of the neck should be exposed, but you don't want to see the neck of the premolar way down here, so there's a big jump in the transition from the anterior to the posterior portion of the teeth. And what I would do then again is we just back up with our camera a little bit is just take um, the um, torch and just run over that and smooth out where I've been working. And I find what helps a little bit is just to get a dampened Kleenex uh, in some water and just to smooth that over so it gets a nice shiny appearance to the, to the wax and I can go back and just if there's any other contouring that I need to do, I can go back and do some of that. Remember that the root does tend to get narrower as you get up closer to the uh, root, so you might want to spread in between the roots of the teeth, so it's not just sort of one, one width as it goes up towards where the apex of the root should be. The other thing that you want to do, and it depends on how artistic you want to get, is oftentimes if you take a look at uh, the gingiva on a natural dentition, is you'll find just a very slight roll of the gingiva just as you come to the cervical neck. And so one of the things we can do is just add a little bit extra wax to make it a little bit more natural. And you can blend that in to make sure that it's nice. Continuous there, relax there. The other way to add some wax, I'll show you on the canine here, and it'll depend on how much wax you already have on your teeth. The other way, and we'll just back up there in our camera for a minute, is to just take a little sheet of the base plate wax, and this way you can get some wax. If you've got a lot of wax that's sort of missing, you can add wax around the cervical next to the teeth very, very quickly. And again, you want this wax to be relatively dead soft, okay? It should be absolutely soft when you put it on. And the way to add that to the wax, if you can zoom in just a tiny bit here, is to put it down and just cover the cervical neck of the tooth and sort of push it in very firmly. And the wax, again, has to be absolutely dead soft here. And as you get toward the, uh, the um, flange of the denture, you have to taper that almost to nothing. Okay, this is a very quick way to add wax. One of the things you have to be careful of is you do thicken this flange here and you go to sit it back on the denture and the wax is hardened. If it binds in that vestibular portion of the uh, cast, you won't get it seated all the way. Okay, so one of the things we would do here is get that wax on close to where we want. Again, soften the wax. Make sure again that it's not too thick up by the flange of the denture. And then what I'm going to do to make sure, while that's still soft, that it fits on the denture cast, I'm going to push that as firmly as I can to make sure. And you can see right in here, there's a little bit of excess pushing up past the land area of the cast. So in that area there, again, I'm going to trim that back and make sure that I can get that. Because you've spent a lot of time on your occlusion, and you don't want that not seating back down on the cast that the denture is made on. So I'm going to soften that wax again with my spatula, and then what I'm going to do is take the large portion of the um, number seven wax spatula, and I'm going to take away, while this is still relatively soft, take away a lot of the wax all at once from the, these teeth and try to get close to the cervical portion of the tooth. Um, you'll find, if you watch different technicians, you'll find they all have a slightly different way of waxing up the denture. One way isn't necessarily better than another, as long as when you're finished, you sort of get to the place that you, that you want to as far as appearance is concerned. 
Then what I'm doing is just, again, taking away a little bit, making some concavities in between um, the, where the roots would be on the tooth. Remember that there should be a bit more of a prominence around where the canine is. Okay, and we'll clean off the tooth surfaces there. Make sure that you don't have inflamed papilla. You don't want them too bulbous in between the teeth. And if you get a big space in the embrasure areas, one of the things you can do is just heat up your spatula and soften all that wax right in the embrasure area. You can do that right in between all of the teeth so you don't get any bubbles in those areas. That's important for processing, you don't get an air bubble in. As you're working here, this is where your hand on torch will become quite useful. You'll be able to tie things up relatively nicely. Um, and just as you're moving that torch over top of the teeth, make sure to keep it moving. If you stop in one place, you're liable to melt all the wax and find out that um, it all drips away and you have to go back and add the wax um, to the denture there. Okay, so we're starting to get where we want. We need to do a little bit more cleaning off some of this wax here. Again, we can go back and just add a little bit of a roll just around the neck of the tooth to make it look a little bit more natural. Now what you'll find is your torches work a little bit better than the butane torch that I have. It's very hot flame, so you have to be careful. If you stop right in the middle, you're going to have a real problem with the wax melting right away there. And again, if you have a, a damp, dampened Kleenex, just to go back over, and to smooth things, you start to get the wax the way that you want there. Okay, on the palatal portion, you need to make sure that there's no wax anywhere on the tooth surfaces, at least up to where the cervical portion of the tooth is. So you may need to take your spatula and just make sure that you've got all that wax cleaned off the lingual surfaces of the teeth. The reason that we want to make sure all the wax is off those teeth is they're supposed to get trapped in the plaster. And if you invest this in the plaster or the flask for processing, and there's wax around it, we're going to boil that wax out. And if there was wax around those teeth, now there's a space around them, they won't fall out of the plaster. Uh, and that, uh, then you'll have to stick them back into the mold. Um, coming back with our torch in here, we're just getting back up there a little bit with the camera. Okay, we're just going to use that to, again, make sure everything's nice and smooth. If you've got some areas where it's too thick, you can use your uh, red handle knife and thin those out. If you find that some of the wax is starting to build up um, down near the, the uh, one part of the, the denture, you can thin that out either with a knife or a piece of paper or some gauze. Basically get that nice and smooth. This looks a little bit square. I don't know if you can tell here. Remember, everything in the mouth, any of the soft tissue, tends to be very rounded. It does not tend to be square. So you want to sort of soften up some of the contours and again, try to make it look like it would look in nature. Uh, and having a, a dentate cast nearby is often, when you're first beginning, something that will be helpful. You don't want to make the prominences of the roots um, too prominent. They shouldn't be bulging way out. Uh, they should be sort of subtle. Um, and again, you don't want bulbous um, interproximal areas uh, on your teeth. Make sure on the internal surface here, it's not too thick, the wax. You can use your finger to make sure it's not bulging out. If it is bulging out, one of the things that you can do is to take the red handle knife and just put this in, and mine's a little bit bulbous in here is to just take the sort of the flat edge of the dent of the knife against the internal surface and bring it close to the denture teeth up in here so that, that gets thinned out. You can see it's still a little bit bulky in there, probably a little bit more bulky on this side over here. But just to continue to scrape that till it's nice it, you should have a relatively concave surface on that lingual surface so the tongue sort of sits in there and helps to seat the denture. And then again, we use our torch just to smooth off the wax in those areas. Okay. That's how we finish the wax up on our on our dish piece.